to a bonus coffee walk. An absolute bucket list item that I got to do with some of my best friends in the world. We got to go out on Zoom, 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 which is one of the world's fastest super yachts when it was built. Absolutely amazing. The boat will run 28 miles an hour. And one of the coolest things we did is we got to go to the engine room and see the twin V16 Caterpillar motors that are roughly 3,400 horsepower each. That's 6,800 horsepower. Absolutely amazing. I hope you enjoyed. The food was amazing. Again, I got to hang out with some of my best friends in the world. We'll have a link to the boat so you can see more if I didn't capture everything. Thanks for watching. It was an incredible week for me. I hope you all have a great day. This is like coffee walk on water. It is. <laughs> so some of the top things I've done in the world have been with these three gentlemen. Uh, we call ourselves rally good friends because we actually met doing road rallies. Gumball, bull run, things like that. I think we both, if not all of us, have completed our bucket list more than once. Uh, this is one that most people don't get the opportunity to do. So thank you, Byron, for having us. Our pleasure. I'm glad you having you here. We're on Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. How appropriate is that for us? <laughs> do so. It's one of the fastest super yachts when it was built in the world. And still, it's pretty strong, right? Absolutely. So do 24 knots, top down. So we've done some incredible stuff this last four or five days. And I think Byron's tired of me asking him, can we go to the engine room? Let's do it. So why would we want to go to the engine room? What does it take to make a 161-foot boat go 20 knots? 20 knots to cruise, 24 knots top speed. Takes twin Caterpillar. V6 dealing twin turbos with 3,486 horsepower each. So what does 7,000 horsepower look like? I don't know, but let's go. Let's Cheers. <laughs> CP Festival, what? You get to know it's infection. Bang doesn't suck. Ready? I am ready. Let's come on in. And zoom, zoom, zoom. Ooh. In case one zoom wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Hey, Morris, how are you? Very good to see you. Good, good, good. So we met last night on Dennis. Yes. I asked a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we can get some answers today. Yeah, sure. No problem. And right now you guys are in the ECR, or known as Club Laz. And last meeting the of the vessel, we normally keep a whole bunch of stuff. So this would kind of be our common area for either stories of stuff or just the park management to the curb and <laughs> <laughs> so, Wow. Yeah, that would that would make the boat pretty hot. Hey, so I think there's what 19 or 20 people on the boat right now. I believe 19 uh, for crew and guests. Yes. So it's a lot more complicated to have something good size to take care of 19 people than one would think. Yeah. So you were explaining to me a little bit last night, I didn't quite get it, but just even the water usage on this boat is... Yeah. Running, running all day long. Basically, that's, that's for everything. I mean, we even use, obviously, the water for cleaning the boat, rinsing down. Uh, we use it for the uh, slide. We obviously use water out there. Cozy, if we see everyone, amenities, the showers, baths, sinking, drainage, dishwashers, washing machines, everything that goes on in terms of your water usage. I mean, we better keep that running, basically. Yeah, Kimball said y'all make like 2,000 yeah. gallons a day. Yes. Yeah. Reverse osmosis. Yes. It's correct. Yeah. So we'll get to that in the interim, but right now we will do deal mostly with power management. A lot of this is all uh, automatic which is a very nice system. So you never really go dead ship. Dead ship will kind of kill the electronics, babies, your ITs and everything like that. We're shut it down, you have pre-start and reboot. So stereo goes down, party goes down. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is a lot of what I have to manage mostly during the day with the power usage, uh, running it, uh, balancing both generators, the hours, um, with regards to the power of say, coming on and off dock with how much kilowatts we use. Right now, we've got two uh, 99 kilowatts running at 60 hertz. We are the American vessel, so it's typically your 110 output, almost everything, any high uh, machinery, you would use it to a and in three bays. So right now, we're running pretty high, which is actually nice for a generator, running up to about 80 kilowatts. Anything over 80 kilowatts, this one will sense it and then bring it online automatically through a seamless transfer or a synchronized. 
and then it will bounce us a load. So does pretty much everything have to operate 24 hours a day? Yes. That's incredible. Because as soon as anything shuts down and sits, that's where things basically deteriorate. And there's always crew on the boat, yes. whether there's gas or... Uh, we have a strict policy of having someone on board as the boat keeper at all times. So there's not a way or at the dock. Yeah. Okay. Any time that this boat is anything running, we have this one on board. This and stuff is incredible. I mean, I gotta see the engines. Yeah. So <laughs> just on this again. So this also deals with the shore power. So it would synchronize your shore power. So it would link up to the dock and it would do a synchronized. Also, again, not to go dead ships. So everything is running automatically on this system. If the shore power did not go up for any reason, which does happen, especially when they train uh, changing transformers and parameters and it tell users shuts down, these are all set on auto, so it'll kick on automatically and then run right up the system. So there will be some systems that are down, which I would have to go and refute, but most of the systems will come back online as soon as it sends its power drop, voltage drop, anything with regards to your hertz. Uh, your amperage, overloading lines, anything like that, and power management is pretty sophisticated control boards so that you protect most of the equipment in the pool. What does chiller do? So that's your AC system. So we got okay. two breakers for them running at 80 amps, so they do draw a lot of power. Um, mostly all of these are high powered breakers, so this would be the main breaker for a distribution board somewhere else on the boat. Uh, all your heavy equipment like your steering gears, your hydraulics, your chiller systems. Most of that would be run of all these uh, breakers direct. Where's the gas gauge? <laughs> <laughs> it's not have one? Yeah, so over here is my kind of monitoring system, so you can actually see the tank levels right now. These tank levels will show me anything that's going on. Also, with regards to the balancing of the boat, how much water we got, how much fuel we got, gray, black, anything that runs off it. And then also I can scroll through a lot of the power management. So this is a duplication of all the systems that are going on up here. It would read it into here and I can duplicate it. This is so you can have a, a UMC unmanned space okay. in, a, in an engine room. So you can monitor everything outside the engine room. So Don't this would me. give me mostly everything that's going on with regards to even in the safety aspect, your fire and your bilge system. If something has happened of a fire or flooding of a bilge, I could sense it directly right over here. And then um, your gray and black system, this will, this is also another automatic system. There's your poop breath there, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Dennis is taking like five showers a day every day. So yeah. that's his. Yeah. <laughs> There's the water you Don't you feel guilty <laughs> now? Don't you feel guilty? No, you can take so. as long a shower as you want. We've got 2,000 gallons that you can have a shower with, so. So how much fuel does the bulk hold? We've got a total of, I think it is, at the Right now we've got 16,000 gallons as a total fuel usage. Um, and we're, you know, we consider it and monitor it. 16,000 gallons. Yeah. So how much does it cost to fill this boat up? Well, it also depends where you are. So Bahamas sure. versus America is... Say you are, say Miami. So there would be about five, uh, five years per ga uh, five dollars per gallon. So you look... It's $80,000. Yeah. You're pretty good with math. You're yeah. a banker. I was going to let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> I was testing your guys, man. <laughs> so basically, yeah, we, I mean, with this boat, we try not to absolutely cram it because firstly, safety again, if your gauges are even 5% out, you've got the possibility of anything bad going wrong. So we typically never actually push it to the full brim. If we had to do an ocean crossing, 4,500 nautical miles is our maximum range. There we would actually try and stuff it as much as that's a long ways. Yeah. You want to see some big caterpillars? Yeah. I'm ready. 4,500 miles. A little bit of generator noise. But oh, that. Oh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sir.
say at that point the turbos don't even kick in at 50%. So only at about 60% of your turbos actually working, and that's because your speed. So we don't want to push it in the speed in the Bahamas again with the low uh, depth. You wouldn't be able to run any faster. Um, but mostly these guys are solid engines. These guys have been built about 30 years ago. There's not much DLC in this. The sensors are pretty basic and simple. There's no real programming in it. So a lot of the stuff that you would be able to fix is all mechanical. Nothing real electronic. There are some sensors that might be a little bit finicky because of the vibrations and stuff. But other, other Do than you that, prefer this style motor over the new oh, stuff? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can work on this a lot better than I can on the program stuff. Because then you've got a lot of computer work and you have to plug in a lot of the sensors and things to figure out about the dynamics. How many hours do they go before they require a rebuild? Uh, that would be about 20,000 hours. 20,000 hours? Yeah. And you do it here, right? Yeah, we would do it, yeah. This would all be taken apart, everything but the block, everything ripped out of the pistons, and then cleaned up and rebuilt from that. So basically, like the end frame of an 18 meter.
how unusual is it to see this much power in a boat of this size? I mean, this is a big boat, but this is a lot of power in it. Also the design of the boat. So these are typically cruiser boats, so you never really go over 10 to 12 knots. So they would have smaller engines in these typically sized boats. If you get something like a Vancouver, which has got three, 4,000 series MPUs, those things are fucking at 45 knots. They push that. So, and that's not the style of model. So this is kind of that in-between range of, it's a cruise and vessel, but we can go past it. So these are overpowered for this size of boat. It's like, like works hard too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big amount of equipment to look at the so. Last question, if you're allowed to answer, and I hope you can, because I'm yeah. sure I'm wondering. I'm pretty sure Jay's wondering, what do these motors cost? These ones, I mean, for a, depending on brand new versus these age. This is brand new. Brand new, you're probably looking at the half a million to a million long to be conservative. But that's not even dealing with the installation. The labor cost would actually cost more than the actual engine because of it, because of the system requirements and then inputting all the system into your EMI entry monitoring system. That would actually cost more, more about the same price as the actual engine. So I might say half a million to a million, but it might cost about that to actually install. How was it? How was it? Four million already. <laughs> a lot of the time, they would actually cut out the top over here, or cut it or cut the side of the boat out. Yeah. yeah. So I've been mean, on the boat so more affordable. The size when they actually had to take it was a big overall when they actually had to take out the entire engine and your main salon which is right above us they would cut a hole and then throw it out and they take it out yeah but that would only happen like almost once in like 50 years at most so it's, it's a big job that you don't do the rest of the time you would just basically take everything off but the block and then service everything and put it all back together we did just have all our heat, uh, heating changes, turbos, everything we done uh, about six to eight months ago. And that was also a big thing. We're taking this out and long sharing it out this space is quite an act. So, it's beautiful in here. Yeah. It makes, it makes it an experience. Yeah. Well, that's unbelievable. What do you think about that? I think the next build Richard does for me means say I'm one of these motors in it. <laughs> I'll leave that up. I'm going to go to look at for mermaids. <laughs> Can we start one? Yeah, yeah. Nope. it's um, earplugs. It it so, gets, uh, so all this background noise right here just pumps. Well, at the moment, it what you see back here is actually a water main. So you want to look back here. This is actually how we make our water. We have two lift pumps, feed pumps, that yeah. try to bring in water. It's a safety thing. Go through your three filters. Those provide the pressure to go into your high pressure pump. These high pressure pumps push water through your membrane. Okay. And now your membrane is controlled by a regulator that acts with basically back pressure. Okay. Once you hit that certain amount of pressure, the water forces it through the membrane. And the membrane can stop anything, bacteria, metal, uh, uh, any kind of anything in the water. So you can drink the water on the boat, no problem. Yeah. Well, what we do with the, uh, the actual water, we re-mineralize it with drinking water. Because what comes out of here is actually the same as the stored water. Okay. So it's the stored water is not here, here. Right there, it's out of control. So any drinking water, we would actually re Got it. Very cool. Who wants to hear a run? Sure. Yeah! Let's do it. Fired up, oh boy. Alright, yeah. Just got a radio. Is that right yep. <laughs> that is impressive. Dennis, you gonna start it? I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is wait for the system to get into its level. Alright, and now you can start it up. Which is about to start it, right there where it says start? The yeah. we just get ready to start because we're not gonna be doing remote. Everything I do down here, for safety reasons, we never start engines outside here. Okay. So what I would do is just switch the stuff. Stop it to here. Yeah. You broke it, Dennis. <laughs> Way to go. You broke it.
fix my tinnitus. <laughs> yeah, so that's a power tank off. It actually drives the stabilizers. Do you yeah. look at the transmission? Uh -huh. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So the um, yeah, so those basically run run off the crankshaft and create pressure, so you can run your stabilizers rather than run your, your high pressure pumps. So if you've got a bow thruster, which would take more demand, then the pumps would sense the demand and then kick on as well as the PTOs running all the time for the stabilizer. So right now I would normally switch on both generators. So if the it's 150 horsepower power thruster, so it does take a lot of power. So typically on and off docks, that's why we run both generators. And just for the power usage. It has been an incredible week. This is an incredible boat, but that was awesome. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, All right. Enjoy. Great party. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go get some water. <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks a ton. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Sack. Jay, I know you've got a bunch of heavy equipment in your construction company, but nothing anywhere. Nothing here. Anywhere. Nothing like that. Nothing even close. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Let's go see if we can get out of here. Great party. Yes, sir. Let's go.